Hello everyone, my name is Uthers, and welcome back to another episode of Timberborn on the channel here. We have a awesome village going between Beaverton and the Iron Tail Lodge over here that we were working on last episode. Um, it's been a few seasons uh, as I've kind of rounded out the buildings and gotten some things constructed here. So um, the potato farms have expanded. We have our distribution center, the upper loft areas of the lodge is looking pretty nice through here and overall we are progressing well we've even even gathered a good bit of iron ore out of the ruins so far and uh, we're ready to move on to our next auxiliary town um a lot of the production as i said i think i'm going to be putting up in upper beaverton over here and until we get kind of settled and I think honestly like just a huge influx of materials you can see how much stuff we're storing up recently in fact I'll go ahead and turn the gear workshops back on and the lumber mills back on so that we do have beavers doing a mighty fine job over in Beaverton I want to work on this village over here now this village is Woodchip Lodge and I've already pre-laid out, pre out some structures, and I kind of want to go over how I go about expanding the areas. Um, because, you know, setting up a town, in my opinion, is kind of a slower process, um, and getting this foothold correct, I think, is super important. So, I have two drop-off points, and we've been kind of moving some gears, some logs, and planks over here from our awesome uh, distribution post in Beaverton. So a lot of logs and uh, planks being moved at the moment. Uh, we're not sending anything via this distribution post on Iron Tail Lodge, though I could up this and we could set some routes um, to here to send some potential logs this way, just to make sure that we have plenty to work with as we get construction going over on this side. Um, some other things that we did between episodes is we have finished blocking off the edge of the map. So the reservoir has gotten much deeper and we have also um, built a lower reservoir or most of one so far um, to help store some water down below because this town will need some uh, additional potential water storage. And supplies we get a whole bunch of buildings laid out here and we have also set some priorities now getting water is a pretty big priority um, but I'm gonna go ahead and set a few things to a little bit of an upper priority here there we go and with that it's the start of the day so we can ship some population over to Woodchip Lodge. I'm gonna go ahead and ship some people because we have unemployed over here at the Iron Tail Lodge. And we'll migrate four adults over to Woodchip. There we go. And uh, the only places for them to work really is um, this area, the actual lodge itself. So that will be their building area initially. And what I do is I just send them over, you know, during the day kind of early on and uh, they'll, they'll get some construction set up, um, start building some things based on kind of your priority order um, that you have set up over here. You can see we're even um, still trying to kind of finish the, the dam here for the next season. So, you know, they're dropping off some logs and then once kind of nighttime evening happens and they are kind of more chilling, you can migrate the population back over to the Iron Tail Lodge so that they can get their food and water. Um, if you build a construction site here so you can get more beavers building, um, this will go a lot quicker for you, obviously, because you're gonna expand your workforce and your building capabilities, but you'll also be going through supplies a lot quicker. Um, the downside with that, of course, is the fact that these um, distribution points, you know, you can only send so many resources at, at once. Uh, the point of Woodship Lodge, 
we're not going to be producing really any lumber here at Woodchip Lodge. So the, the, the name of the district's a little bit misleading in that sense. Um, let's go ahead and send our four beavers back over so they can continue building. And the reason that we're not going to be harvesting any logs over here, even though that might speed up some some uh, construction effort, is that this is going to be a farming community. And this is where we're going to have that wheat and um, bakery set up to be redistributed uh, to the other communities nearby long term. That's kind of at least my plan as it stands. It looks like we will get all the way across on the dam there. I was a little worried that we wouldn't be able to uh, get there, but I'm happy to say that once in 2.3 days, our, um, our kind of drought will be over. So we won't have to worry about any sort of water shortage. Though I'm, I doubt I'm gonna have any water shortage. Your guys' comments in all these videos have been really great, by the way. And, Thank you for those. There's good, good solid feedback for, for people who, who are getting started in the game and maybe play differently from the way I do, for sure. I'm, I do not play in the most optimal manner. In fact, you know, some people were suggesting to build just directly over the water. And for some reason, that that concept didn't even, didn't even occur to me, you know, um, which is why over here, these water pumps, we have them on docks. So, um, you know, this is, this is kind of the first building over water that we're going to have, um, for the most part, and maybe the only building directly over water. Um, it's not really something that I had in mind when I thought of pretty much any of these plans or, or ideas. So we are shipping some gears over because we will need gears for the large water tanks. And everything over here is going to be driven simply by windmills. And we do have, if I look at our power, we do have the large windmill upgrade. And we're going to kind of put these along where we can to power our food. Now we need to unlock a grill a grist mill for flour production and then also a bakery yes and i might even do a beehive we have the research might as well boost the growth of nearby crops which is uh unique to this faction which would be pretty cool um the bakery does require some gears so let's get some of the baker buildings laid out here now up up here is where our residents are actually going to live. Let's see what we can do. The bakery kind of layout. Maybe do something like that. Get a nice new path. Cutting through there. So we're going to have three bakeries. And. We can talk about beehives, increasing crop growth, long term, and we'll also need our farmhouses made. So we got three there. And then I guess we'll do three at the lower field too. Oh, we'll do two. So we'll just have four, four, maybe five max farmhouses. Maybe this one we can put on a little, little step. I'm gonna build up, build it off this little cliff area. So, you know, this is good. This, this, all these structures and buildings, they will take a while for us to establish. Um, I know a lot of people say don't build so many buildings at once, but let's face it, at the end of the day, um, to get this town functional, all these buildings need to get made. 
Um, and if we don't have them made, then simply we don't have a functional town anyways. Um, more workers would obviously, again, speed that process up. Um, but also, you know, might not exactly. Uh, we do have another builder's hut. So next day we will send an additional four beavers over from Iron Tail Lodge to hopefully speed that up. We are trying to send as many logs as possible, but you can see we are, you know, burning through them rather quickly here. And in fact, We'll get plenty of beavers in the distribution post up there. Um, other things that I want to commit to is the wheat fields because they will look real, real cool in here. Has to kind of take up this whole hillside in a good kind of farming community way. So like long-term, you know, this is this is kind of why I lay out all these buildings. Long-term, you can, you can really see what we're going for just by looking at all the blueprints and you can get a good feel for how it's going to go and look. Okay, it's a new day. Uh, we have two unemployed here, so we'll migrate four over to wood chip. And we'll migrate four over to wood chip. So there we go. We've doubled our workforce. That should increase productivity. We are, you know, sending gears, logs, planks still. Look at all these, these beavers coming over here, making sure we got the stockpile we need. We're going to get a warehouse kind of quickly early on get that thing made for functionality's sake we will be building some irrigation towers to provide some grass um, through here to make it look pretty good and if we can maintain water up in this reservoir underneath the docks here um, that will hopefully keep this land decently irrigated um, through the dry season as well you can see we're actually sucking up enough water to take it down a level here. Which is pretty crazy that we've kind of gone through that much water on our pumps. But, you know, we have plenty in storage. We just got 0.3 days left of this dry season. We'll be good to go. All right, so we're starting to make the docks down here, which, uh, did I prioritize those? Nah, not really. They're just kind of going to go ahead and construct whatever they feel like it in this order. Um, let's down, down. Down, down. It's fine. And then we'll get these two up, three up. Migrate the population back to Beaverton and Iron Tail before it gets too late and they starve while they're separated away from their their homesteads. So working with the priorities, you know, trying to get things figured out as best as possible. And then we're gonna build a nice beaver lodge at the top here. For them to all live in and have a good beaver time. So we really only need enough workers here on this on this village to you know drive all five pumps and also you know the five farms, the three um, bakeries. And then, you know what? I forgot the mills. So we might get to build those here on this upper level. Might be a good spot for it. All right, it's a new day. We'll send beavers back. 
Send four adults over to wood chip. Uh, migrate population for adults over to wood chip. Good, look at all these beavers delivering things on a day-to-day -day basis. They're delivering uh, planks, logs, other, other goodies for our construction efforts to continue. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pause the water pump so we can get four and four workers. There, just to speed up that construction effort. This is going to be, yeah, the bottom. Bottom for us. Okay. Let's delete this beehive. We're not potentially going to need it. And let's talk about food. We need some grist mills. And this takes six, these take 60 horsepower to kind of run. And the large windmills produce 300 horsepower. Which is pretty good. We'll get two of them. That's 600 total horsepower. 300 if uh, we're not really producing much. So we'll put a four connection there. T junction here. Very good. And that will connect up long term. Now at that point we can go ahead and replant all this wheat. I kind of got disrupted. Speed up time. Let them keep establishing this village. Working on the docks because they have a lot of planks to go through. We have no base timber, but that's okay. That gives them time to kind of go through the planks in general. There you have it. Tell you what, guys, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play through this for a little while. Um, and we'll come back when this thing is kind of established, though. Look at this. Look at the, look at the water raising here. Finally coming back from that dry spell. And then it will spill over here once it gets at a certain level. And our dam will be fully functional. We'll actually have water going through the spillway here. At a good height. It does take it a little while to get all the way refilled. We do go through a lot of water with our irrigation towers. Um, you know, through the dry season. I know, I know, apparently a lot of people don't like the irrigation towers. Which kind of makes sense. Also, I need to, I need to send these guys back. Here. We might have lost one due to food because I didn't pay attention to send them back. Um, but I just want to show you guys what the waterfall looks like. If we can just get a little bit higher. Current water level. Yeah, you can see it goes up pretty slowly. You know, it kind of takes a full day. Oh, there we go. I kind of wish the water... You know, it technically is at this height. Um, I just don't think it flows quite correctly over the dams. Um, I think that's a possibly a glitch. I think they need to move the edge of the slope at the edge of the block here instead of central. Because what that happens is it just kind of splits that off. But, you know, you can see we got water flowing now. And uh, we're getting this reservoir set up. Just like that. There you have it. Get ourselves a nice 
lower reservoir there. All right, so this is how everything kind of turned out in this area of wood chip. Even though we don't harvest any lumber here, it's a little bit of a weird sounding name for settlement. Um, but it's just on the other side of Beaverton. Um, this is our grain producing facility. So we got water, we got food for the beavers. So they're self-sufficient in that regard. We do have to ship in some lumber for the bakeries, but outside that, they're pretty much good to go. Um, we even built some beehives over here, kind of a new structure since we um, have a temporary paper mill on the other side of the map. And uh, yeah, so far things are looking good for this area. You know, these large windmills producing a really good amount of power if there's wind of course and uh, you know that's going to be operating our three mills which will be feeding our three bakeries to produce bread for the whole region um, the last thing that i am working on is our distribution center up here we're going to be putting that over this little road to give us a little bit more verticality and interest in the uh, area here with uh, builds like that so, you know, I've been taking your guys' suggestions, you know, trying to layer things on top of each other a little bit more because, you know, the game does allow you to do that. I think early on I was a little bit stuck in my kind of banished ways. Um, but, yeah, it's it's looking real, real good. We have enough room for 54 beavers over here. Um, they got a nice center plaza to keep them entertained and refreshed. And... Um, that's, that's really about it. Look at these wheat fields, though. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Um, I did go ahead and dam up the upper river. We have some floodgates here, so in the dry season, if we need to use this as a reservoir, we can and release it to fill up the lower basin with some more water. So that is pretty handy for sure. Um, and then this is just kind of just walled off for now. Um, and that is, that's basically it. So if you guys enjoying Timberborn, feel free to subscribe for more creative goodness such as this. Hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And we'll be moving on to the industrial area of Upper Beaverton here, I think, in the next episode. So until then, enjoy the beavers we're running around.